What's going on y'all? Welcome to 72 Shoes. My favorite sneaker category is sportswear and my two must-have features of footwear is comfort and quality. So for me, these are essentially a perfect match. These being the Nike sock darts. They were originally released in 2004 and they've had a strong comeback in 2016. For 130 bucks, it's on the low end of Nike's footwear price scale. Nike sock dart may be Bill Bowerman's closest vision of footwear when he looked to create a sneaker that functioned as a sock with a sole. The Sock Racer back in 1984 was Nike's like first attempt at achieving the vision. At the time, the Sock Racer was such a marvel it took the running community by storm. But by today's standards, we see a shoe that was literally a yellow sock with seat belts. Fast forward 20 years later, the HTM Giants developed a Sock Dart. HTM standing for Hiroshi Fujiwara, Tinker Hatfield, and Mark Parker. These come equipped with a computerized knitting technology on the upper. Basically, it's a large computerized sewing machine, essentially knitting the entire one-piece upper. A lot of big footwear companies are leaning on these machines to create lightweight, breathable uppers for their footwear. And for added support, you'll find a fastened silicone strap. In the earlier models, the strap was actually translucent. This particular colorway being the Racer Blue, the silicone strap matches the mesh upper. A fan favorite speckle can be seen on the Phylon midsole. Phylon is the same midsole used in Flyknit Racers, however the Phylon is much more compressed in the Flyknit Racer than the Sock Dart. To assist with durability, you will notice it's wrapped in a rubber outsole. The Sock Dart was the stepping stone for what became a designing marvel eight years later with the development of the Flyknit Racer. These were a hit in Japan, but with limited units, it simply just faded away. These really take on the same story as the Air Max Zero by Tinker Hatfield. The Nike suit saw the Sock Dart as being futuristic and ahead of its time, and just like that, it was gone. The unknown hero in this whole story, like I mentioned earlier, is the Flyknit Racer. The Flyknit Racer proved the world was ready to reach towards sneakers that were a little bit different. And in 2014, Hiroshi and his team at Fragment Design actually gave us a limited Fragment sock dart. From there on, the hype grew, and in 2016, Nike brought back the 12-year-old design for the world to enjoy. These are great kicks for summer. They're light, they're breathable, they're durable, and comfortable. They are only a full size sneaker, which means they don't come in half sizes. I would suggest sticking true to size. Also again, these are a sportswear sneaker, not a performance wear shoe. So don't expect to get much use from them if you're looking for a new running shoe. These just aren't your answer. Overall, I'm happy with these and glad they're releasing in solid colors. With the implement of Nike ID, these are gonna be a great sneaker for people who wanna add a little flair. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, these will run you about $130, while the Fleece Edition, Fragment Editions will run you $150. And finally, the Nike ID option will run you 170. That about wraps it up. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Be on the lookout for a full review and backstory of the recent Air Jordan 12 flu games. Peace.